Oh, okay, we can good. hear you now. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. It's, okay. It's perfect. I'm glad it worked out. Yes. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet um, you. I love, nice love, love this book. You guys did <laughs> such a phenomenal job. So I'm oh so my excited. goodness, team. <laughs> and I got my author copies the other day. So they're yes. right here. I love so it. So beautiful. Everything yes. about this book. So I want to start just by saying this book is phenomenal. The, the words and the illustrations, they just work together so well. And as I like to say, there's a great synergy between you the words like and the that. <laughs> illustrations. So Kim, I'm going to start yeah. with you. Okay. So exciting to interview you on our podcast. Yay. Woo. Woo. Where did you get the idea for this story? So this story, it actually kind of wasn't my idea. <laughs> it was Kayla's idea. I got an email from Kayla in October of 2020, a very lovely email. And um, she was suggesting or asking if I would be interested in writing another female athlete focused biography since um, her fearless run was received so well. And um, I absolutely was definitely interested in that. So we set up a meeting and I pitched, I think I pitched maybe three or four uh, different people for a, a subject for the biography, but Abby was definitely at the top of the list for me anyway. And then um, Kayla and Will, the publisher, agreed that Abby would make a fabulous subject for a biography. And so that's where the idea came from. It was, oh a, my it was goodness. a collaboration from the beginning. I remember when you were trying to decide which people to pitch and you were mm -hmm. doing all this research and trying to find the best. And yep. I do. I love that you landed on Abby Wambach. She's the perfect um, subject for this book. Uh, Kayla, so we already know that you were asking for this story, <laughs> but what was it about this story, this particular one that she, that Kim ended up writing that made you want to acquire it? I just remember when Kim was pitching the ideas. Uh, I don't even remember who else you pitched now, Kim, because I just remember <laughs> being so drawn into Abby's story. I think you had just recently read her biography too, mm -hmm. so it was all fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, but Kim was telling us about all of these struggles that Abby faced and how she just overcame them. And it made such a natural story as well. That's always the biggest thing I'm looking for with biographies is you can't just list somebody's accomplishments. Like that's great if they accomplished a lot, but you want a whole arc of tension. <laughs> yeah, that's boring. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Abby's story already had that built in just from the turn of events that her career took. So I knew that Kim would do a great job with that since she did such a great job with Catherine Switzer's story. And sure enough, from the first draft, uh, Kim's really good about using language to up that natural tension even more. We've got the sound effects. She's We've got, got yeah, the, the onomatopoeia. Love <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. The thump whiz whoosh works yeah. really well throughout this. Um, but yeah, all of those natural struggles and triumphs combined with Kim's language, we knew from the first draft, like, yeah, we want this. We thought we'd maybe have to do a couple drafts before we knew for sure, but she nailed it. <laughs> she did. It's definitely a winner. <laughs> so Kayla, what was the illustrator uh, selection process like? So this was an interesting one, actually, because Page Street Kids always uses a pretty involved illustrator selection process. Um, we actually thought from the beginning that we were probably going to just ask Ellen Rooney, who illustrated her fearless run, but Ellen was not available. So we were like, all right, we'll conduct our normal search which involves uh, me and the other designers asking Kim and our higher ups at the company, like, do you have any specific vision for the art, whether it's specific people or even just like vague vibes you want us to kind of look for. 
So then we go off with any feedback they give us and do individual research. I myself have like a little Instagram file cabinet I keep and I usually just kind of look through all of those illustrators that I like and set aside the ones I think could be good matches and narrow it down from there. And then the designers and I all come together with our ideas talk about them, why they might be a good match. We vote and build a short list from there to share with our bosses, talk about it again, whittle it down more, share a couple options with the author. So this one was funny because Kim actually last minute before we were going to have our meeting with the bosses uh, suggested a couple artists and one of them was Alexandra. And we liked Alexandra so much that we were like, yeah, we'll add her to the meeting last minute, of course. And uh, everyone agreed that she and one other illustrator were our top choices. And when we brought them back to Kim, she went, yep, I want Alexandra. And I'm so glad that Love we did get Alexandra <laughs> because I can't imagine the book any other way now. Your art, especially those beautiful, magical purple and pink sparkles. <laughs> oh my God. Everything. The colors are just so stunning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, it is so magical. And I'm so happy that you said yes, Alexandra. Can you can you tell us what was it that made you want to say yes to working on the project? Well, I'm so happy that I got the offer. Um, I love uh, stories about women. Uh, I tend to, when I uh, get inquiries, I tend to, if it's a woman, then I'm like immediate interest. Like I, even if I'm like in, sitting on the couch, and I'm not planning to do any work and I see this, like sometimes I'm like, okay, I will take it in an hour. But when I see something about a, about a female, um, I'm really interested and I start to go and research. And I come from an athlete family. I grew up in a culture about soccer. Turkey is so big of soccer. Like I'm Romanian, Romania is so big of soccer. So. I was really interested. I was really interested because it was a woman uh, in soccer, which um, women in soccer not not that appreciated. Uh, you know, it's it, when you look at the U.S. team, you see all their accomplishments, and it's not talked enough. And I think it was really important for me to uh, talk about, you know, like women in soccer, women in at like uh, women athletes and any like any kind of woman. I I I, I, I have a soft spot of oh trying goodness. to present <laughs> it's like the perfect fit for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh so Kim, yes. can you please share us share with us your writing process for this book? Yes. Um so I find every biography is very different, which is interesting because you would think if, if it's a biography, it's kind of the same um, each time around. But um, it always starts with research, and which is my favorite part, actually. Um, I And I always start my research with the best of intentions of staying organized and keeping all of the information that I find very neat. Um, I usually start with note cards where I write uh, a fact on one side and then the source that it came from on the other. So I kind of keep things, um, you know, together and know where they came from. Um, that generally lasts for a little while. And then quickly, I just end up using my yellow pad of legal, my yellow legal pad um, to just continue to write. Because I, my brain, I feel like just works really fast. And I, to pause grab a note card, write all that stuff down. So I have the best of intentions of staying organized. It doesn't always work out, but I have all the information written down somewhere. So I know if, if it's written down, I'll find it if I need it. So, and I generally <laughs> tend to go back to my notes a million times, uh, when I'm working on uh, a biography. Um, and I, I have a hard time, uh, stopping my research. I like to linger in the research because uh, drafting is uh, very terrifying to me. I, here so you know, I have this um, hate, hate relationship with drafting. It's just really hard for me. I mean, give me revision all day long. It, it's a love, hate relationship with, with revision, but hate, hate with, with drafting. <laughs> um, I just have a really hard time figuring out um, how to get started. And so I tend to procrastinate and not start. Um, 
So I'm working but on that. But that could mean that you're just percolating. Exactly. And then when you do start, it's just way better than it would have been. Exactly. It's all perhaps. Planned. Totally. <laughs> well, and as an editor, thank you so much for doing such thorough research and yeah. organizing it so well, because that makes my job easier when we yeah. have to go fact check a bunch of things later and you right? know exactly what came from what source. Exactly. I try. I try. I feel like I could be even better with the organization and I'm working on that. But for the most part, I can find things and it doesn't take too long to go back um, and find that information. But once I get drafting, um, you know, and I kind of get into it. It takes a while for me to get the draft down. Um, I think this book in particular was extra hard for me um, for two reasons. Her Fearless Run was my first book and it was well received and it received two star reviews. And so I felt pressure from like myself, the internal pressure, right? To kind of repeat that in some sort of way. Um, you know, we always put that pressure on ourselves. I think, um, if something works out well, the first time you want it to be just as good the second time around, um, totally. but also, uh, her fearless run with Catherine's story, um, had a really clear storyline. It was a really clear climax. Um, you know, there was that moment, that story of her in the Boston marathon. And so it was really uh, easier to find Catherine's story. Like Kayla was saying earlier with, with Abby, I mean, she's an amazing athlete, right? She has all of these accolades. She's got two Olympic medals, world cup championship. She was us soccer's female athlete of the year, six times, um, 184 international goals, which is the most of any male or female U S soccer player. So she's just like amazing. And that's she is. great, but not a wonderful story, um, to tell, uh, that's really compelling for, you know, for readers. So, um, I had to dig a little deeper on this one to find, um, you know, what the storyline would be for Abby. And it's funny, Kayla, how you talk about how in that first pitch meeting, I was talking about all these things, um, these failures that Abby had and, and it's like, I knew all that. And yet still, I, for some reason struggled with, Oh, how am I going to write this story? Um, but we figured it out and, uh, the draft was completed. Uh, and luckily, uh, Kayla liked it and wanted to buy it. So that was, I, of course she yeah. liked it. It's beautiful. Yeah. So do you have a write a specific writing schedule? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. I do not have a writing schedule. I wish I did. I feel like I go through uh, periods of time when I do have a writing schedule, I tend to write um, in the mornings. Um, a lot of times I'll wake up early before the kids get up for school and try to get some things in then, some time in then. Um, but uh, that ebbs and flows. Uh, lately, you know, it's cold now. And so I like to sleep in and stay warm in the covers. <laughs> um, so I try to just write. For me, I just have to be inspired to write. If I get a story idea, um, and then, then I can't get it out of my head. Then I'm just going to sit down and write and research. And, um, that's, that's when I get most of my writing done is I feel like in spurts, it's not really like a consistent day-to-day -day kind of thing. I love that. So yeah. what do you do when you're stuck and you want to write, but you just can't? Uh, <laughs> that's an excellent question. Um, when I'm stuck and I want to write, but I can't, or when I have a deadline and I have to write, right. Right. Like edit notes that need to go back to the editors. Um, I think what's helpful for me, I print everything out. So like all of Kayla's notes, when she sent me back, um, the different things to, to work on, um, I print them out and I go through them one by one and I just kind of let them percolate a little bit. Um, a lot of times, I'll go back to my, my messy notes and just read things over. What did I miss? There's gotta be something I missed here. Um, that could, that could help solve this, this problem that we're having in the manuscript. Um, so I think going back it, to the research and trying to find a nugget that I missed that could really, uh, make a difference in the story. And I feel like that happened a lot actually in the revision process through Kayla's notes. This story was absolutely written in revision for sure. <laughs> it, 
it totally a thousand percent was. That thanks, is to super... K- thanks to Kayla's notes. <laughs> yes. I think that's very important for people to know that mm-hmm. a lot of books, most books, but I would venture to say all books mm-hmm. are, have at least one or two or 100 million revisions. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Further published. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, that's, that was the writing process. That was, that's what I do. Yeah, of course. Um, so Kayla, do you want to chat a little bit about what the editing process was like? I kind of alluded to it a little bit, but coming from your end, what was it like? Well, yeah, that's so funny hearing about it from your perspective. Cause from my end, like I didn't see all of that internal struggle you were having <laughs> with it. So to me, it was just, I sent you a bunch of notes and then you did a great job addressing most of them on the first try. What was probably not the first try for you, I'm sure, but the right. first try that I saw. <laughs> so it was a pretty good volley of just us going back and forth with notes and, uh, getting down to the smaller and smaller things. With this one, honestly, I feel like most of the story revision went pretty smoothly. And then, you know, you need a few more volleys back and forth for line edits and word choice and everything. But the hardest part of this one was we didn't have enough pages and yeah. um, we needed to fight for an extra spread. Mm-hmm. And then, um, which we did get, thank goodness. Yes. So we could yes. have that final big spread of Abby successful mm-hmm. after her hundredth goal. Yes. Uh, So important. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So I'm glad that worked out. And then a lot of it, honestly, uh, was, I feel like the art process was harder than the text process because we had to keep doing some little text adjustments for that, make sure Mm -hmm. everything was matching up with Alexandra's lovely art. Um, But also just all of the fact checking that goes into nonfiction Mm -hmm. makes it such another level from working on fiction, which I mostly work on. Uh, but yeah, those biographies, we had to check the uniforms multiple times. We yes. realized at one point in the process that the uniforms weren't uh, correct in one part. So we had to be like, sorry, Alexandra, can you <laughs> fix these colors? Oh my goodness. Um, it's so much work. I know. Well yeah. worth it though. Exactly. Yeah. Well it worth turned it. Out great. And one of our <laughs> biggest problems is uh, that Abby is most recognizable with her short blonde haircut. And the story we mm-hmm. were telling takes place when her hair is long and brown. And right. we were like, well, we can't show her hair that everybody's used to because that's inaccurate. Right. Uh, <laughs> so that's why our cover kind of turned out how it did too, because we we're like, let's try to show more recognizable Abby, but also we need to show what she looks like in this book. And we wanted to show the kid version of her as well, even though we don't see her for as long in the book. So things like that, honestly, on my end, at least felt a lot more uh, tricky than any of the text process. Well, it turned out beautifully. And speaking of illustration um, issues, (laughs) Alexandra, (laughs) Your illustrations, as we've been talking, they're just so lovely and stunning. And I just love looking at them. Mm -hmm. What was your illustration process like for this book? Um, I think there's uh, working on like real people. It's always the same. It's, you know, it starts with research on my end to trying to get a lot of photos, you know, just tab tabs of people it looks creepy if somebody opens my computer and sees my like tabs like color-coded tabs <laughs> that are full of pictures of a person trying to understand like there's in- their instagram it's like whatever you find like their videos there was a couple videos uh of her I think there was like some injury videos open. There was a bunch of really, <laughs> <laughs> like weird things. Like somebody would think that I was like planning something. I was a speaker <laughs> looking for their work. Um, and the sketching, you know, it's just, um, the, I like sketching on the whole book at the same time using artboards so I can see everything. I can look at the flow. Um, I come from an animation background. Uh, so for me, the most important thing is the flow of the book. So I can see everything together, like or everything laid out together. So I, I just look how the movements are working uh, throughout. Like when you turn the page, it's not only like one page to another. It's just like the experience of turning the page and how that flow works. Uh, so sketching is mostly like a little bit more like planning, like in drawing and just trying to look into compositions. Um, 
And this is about soccer. I not, first I'm not too big on soccer. Uh, so there was a lot of research on like, I would go to my partner, he's really big on soccer. So I was like, how did I do this? Like, is this right? Like, is it like, she like, she is like it, this just this pose looks right right <laughs> so there was a lot of that and you know back and forth with my art directors and just figuring out um how correct the things are you know fact checking which i appreciate because i miss things uh i'm with i look at it all the time so i miss it for sure there's always things that i miss uh and i appreciate when somebody is like hey there is a mistake. Let's fix this. There, I think there was another mistake with uh, uh, the leg she was holding when she was yeah. injured at some point. So I was like, oh, 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 that's bad. Okay, let's, let's <laughs> fix that. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, it's, I, I really enjoy this process of, you know, like uh, back and forth communication and, you know, revision uh, just to make it better because, like I said, I look at it for so long. I'm just so into it. Somebody else that understands looking from outside of it, it's great for me. It's so important in all of writing. Well, like Kim, when you were writing the words, you had critique partners like me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look at the words, just like right. all of that collaboration for the whole team. When you have more than one set of eyes, it just makes it that much better. Absolutely. I totally agree. Alexander, do you draw or paint or sketch every day? Do you have a set schedule? I don't have a schedule. I do it. It comes with a profession because I need to work every day. <laughs> so it comes with that. Uh, I don't like, sadly, I don't draw um, as a hobby anymore. It's not like it because it, it has been doing this for so long as a job that anytime like I, I draw in like only like there's specific cases that I really feel like I want to draw at that moment but it feels like a job so I, I have other hobbies that I do mm -hmm. besides it uh, and I think what, I'm just, just curious what are those other hobbies that you're doing instead of drawing <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I have to use my hands, right? Um, uh -huh. I love pottery. I Ooh. do pottery on wheel. Uh, I started doing it uh, during the pandemic in 2020, and I've been doing it regularly every week ever since. I love that. Uh, I actually had my pottery class today. <laughs> not more. Yay. It's not like so more like creative. A class it's yeah. still art. Yeah. You're still doing art. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. It's something for fun. So I do a bunch of you know, mugs and little like bowls and I give them away to friends uh, and family. So it's a part of like me that's like, it's not touched by any like financial gain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something uh -huh. just for me. You know, I, I like biking. I'm trying to learn to roller skate, but <laughs> it's really hard to find the time. Like I'm, yeah. I'm 30 years old trying to learn how to roller skate. I love that. Uh, I think late. that's amazing. Never yeah. too late. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so exactly. what's the hardest part of illustrating for you? I think it's uh, in the beginning when you are uh, working, like trying to have things look accurate. Uh, I love uh, like drawing real people uh, and, you know, drawing portraits, but it's still like you, you need to be conscious and respectful about a lot of things. So I think in most cases, just uh, thinking ahead and like being conscious about things and just uh, trying to you know just looking at the book like the diversity and everything that just making it so that I this is not like one-sided illustration um, I think that's the it's not the hardest it's challenging mm -hmm. uh like it's time waste not i don't want to say wasting but it's like it takes time mm -hmm. um i think that's it's the never a waste way. i don't <laughs> yes exactly yeah. uh i it, it's i don't want to say hard at this point i've been doing it for so long and I, I think it like it flows naturally now mm -hmm. uh, with my process but just sometimes it's 
a little bit more challenging mm -hmm. sometimes. And, and it, a challenge it, is it always good. good. Yeah, yeah, it just takes extra yeah. thought sometimes, right? To get it right. It, it, yeah. And it makes it interesting. So it's not, you know, the same thing over and over again. Right. And, you know, every project has its own challenges in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, cars. I love that. Cars are challenging. Cars. <laughs> I have to draw cars. No cars in this book, so that's good, right? right? I love it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So this has been amazing, and the time has flown by. And we have one more question for each of you. So I'm going to start with you, Kayla. When someone reads this book, what do you hope they feel or learn? I think there's a lot you can learn from this book, and that's part of what's so great about it. Abby is inspirational, not just in being such a talented soccer player, but just in the way she approaches everything. She's so determined. She never gets up, even in the face of huge struggles, like overcoming her leg injury especially is so impressive. But I think within that too, what impresses me the most is I love that when she does have that leg injury and she's not going to be able to compete along with her team, instead of just kind of moping about it and feeling like, oh, I'm not going to get to do this. I'm not going to be in this competition and get this chance to win it as I've been hoping for. But she instead thinks about how can I still help my team even if I'm not there to play? And she sends them that inspirational email and it's so cool that she's able to still be a part of it and be so selflessly supportive and uh, that they still went to victory and she still got to share in that even as she worked on her own uh, struggles overcoming that injury. That's one of my favorite parts of the book. Mm -hmm. It's Thank so, you. it's got, there's just so much heart there. And it's a real letter that Abby wrote herself. It's so cool. Yes. We did turn some parts of it out for yes. sake of space. But yes. yeah, those are all those her are words. words. So it's very what was that? I'm not sure. We'll have to cut that out. Did you hear know. that? I didn't hear that. Anyway, oh, you didn't okay. hear anything? That's okay, I heard it too. Yeah. Anyway, it it's weird. Her words. Yeah. It's so cool. No, it's good. Uh, what about you, Alexandra? When someone reads this book, what do you hope they feel or learn? You know, there's two parts about it. One of them is like when you look at it overall, uh, I think what Kayla said, it's just that it's be inspirational, the mental strength of a person, uh, an athlete, uh, because athletes need to have so much mental strength with uh, everything that can happen. Uh, and just looking at that, um, you know, just how she's acting, just that uh, her composure and everything, just showing that and being a part of like sharing that, you know, it's, it's hard. Injuries are hard. My brother got injured last week during the game. So like, he is a pro athlete too. So it happens. It's a part of the job. And it's just, you know, how you handle it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like just a conversation. And, you know, kids need to see it, uh, you know, Agreed. It. and in every aspect, you don't have to be an athlete to just see some, like something happening to you. It doesn't have to be an injury, something happening right. to you, challenges happening to you and how you keep your composure, how you can look at it, you know? And then the second part of it is feminist, you know, is just uh, looking at this uh, woman, and seeing like just talking about a woman's success and just everything about it and adding the past faces uh, that I can uh, take away from. Thank you. I love that. So Kim, I have been walking through this journey with you from the very beginning and it's yes. been super fun to, you know, watch the step-by-step -step process through your eyes. What do you hope that people feel or learn? So uh, for me, everything that Kayla and Alexandra said absolutely um, is, is one thing that, that I hope um, readers take away. Um, I think the biggest thing is, like Alexandra was saying, the, the toughness, right? The mental toughness. Um, and that's part of actually my dedication was to anyone that's going through a tough time um, know that you're tougher than this tough time. Uh, because I, and I think, you know, with COVID and everything, we've all had a really tough couple of years. Um, and, um, you know, for, for people who have, um, struggles in their life, 
I just hope that they read this and know that it gets better and that it does. You can, you can, you can make your way through it. Um, because, you know, Abby did that over and over again. Uh, so I think that's wonderful. I also hope that readers will, um, be inspired to maybe learn a little bit more about Abby because she is such a phenomenal activist. Um, and even though that's not part of this story, because, you know, with picture books, we, we focus on a, a particular storyline. Um, so even though there's not uh, that piece to this story, there's a little bit in the back matter um, that touches upon it. Um, she's, she's just such an inspiration. And so I, I hope, readers are um, curious about uh, Abby now because she, even though she's not playing soccer anymore, uh, she's still making a huge difference in the world uh, for women, for athletes, for women athletes. Um, and um, I don't know about anybody else, but I really enjoy their podcast. We can do hard things. Me which too. <laughs> I just want to say, came out after I wrote this book. And so... The fact that the podcast title is We Can Do Hard Things and the, the message of the book is about, you know, being uh, stronger than or tougher than your, your toughest challenge, I think just it was meant to be. So it matches it perfectly. 